we can't wait to go in the new building. It's going to be a lot more natural light in there. It'll do the meat and the fish justice, really. We'll see it in a whole new environment. We'll be working from behind the stalls, serving to the front. At the minute, I have to duck and dive in between customers. It can be a bit not very professional, really. It's, it'll be nice to stand on the other side of the counter and, and look at them that way. So uh, we need modernising. I mean, we landed man on the moon, so I'm sure we can have a new fish market. It's a very dated building. For its day, it was, it was very, very good for its day, but it, 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 soon, it soon went out of fashion very quickly. You're seeing society change now because you're getting more supermarkets, you're getting more, more malls, you get free parking, you can even get your car clean while you go shopping. So, uh, but don't say that to the boss because he might think, suggest that I go and start doing that. So, to the customers. I must, I must enjoy the job because I get up at half past five every morning for six days a week. So, um, the, the return that I get from the job is um, the customers really. It's not taking the money. It's not the early hours, it's, it's, it's feeling like part of the community and being, and, and mixing with different races because you, you see what you see on television, but then when you actually mix with them face to face, it's, a, it's completely different. They're really lovely people. You're seeing human beings for what they really are. I don't expect life to be easy, but when you go home, you feel satisfied that you've done a full day's job. And also we like to sell quality goods on here and people you know, remind us of that. Thank you for that lovely bit. Even if it's a tiny bit of fish to a whole salmon, they say that was lovely. And that's, that's nice to understand that you know, people appreciate what you're selling, really. Why we come here to Leicester Indoor Market is because it's very personal. And um, you know, people every week say, see you next week. This fresh stuff is lovely. The thing is with Tesco's and supermarkets like that is, yeah, it's good but it's just people working there and I'm sure sometimes it's, it's just a job, which is fine, but these are professionals. It's their living, their trade, and it will be sad to see it go. And it has dwindled very much over the last year or two since I've been coming here, but it will be nice to see it in the new environment. It'll be really fresh it up and hope it brings a lot more people back into uh, the fresh fish and meat market. And we opened this because there's uh, many of Polish in this city, Polish people, Russian, Slovakian, who have, uh, who like very, very much our sausages, Polish meat, and you know all, all of our products. Yeah. So our percent of people, of course, you know, have the most is uh, near 50 percent is Polish, then 10 percent, 20 percent Slovakian and Rus Russian, and. Uh, the rest of percent is uh, English and uh, Asian people and different nationalities. Before my stall is how it is now, we, we, had, we didn't have a dividing wall with the stall next door. And let's say there was obviously husband, wife and son weren't there. And like, like I say, no wall, so we were all open to it. They'd be throwing knives and choppers at each other, having fights. You'd never seen anything like it. You're like, you think, well, I've come into flipping Beirut. You know, it was like that. It was unbelievable. You think, oh, you devil. This was in the first few years. What have I let self in for? We had one chap out around with someone in the pub, runs behind one of the butcher's stall, picks the chopper up, and runs out with it to, oh, you've never seen anything like it. But that's back, in, it don't happen luckily nowadays, but that's what, you know, we had a few incidences like that. When we first come in here, the trade was absolutely phenomenal. It, it was like, you know, people, we were screaming at each other. If we wasn't set up by sort of quarter past eight, People had just hit us and we wouldn't get self sorted out the rest of the day. You were sort of falling behind all day long. To be fair, it's altered hell of a lot now. The new market, you know, we, the council have really gone out the way to uh, liaise with us to obviously get it right. And I think at the minute, fingers crossed, it, it, you know, it's going to be how our, our traders want it and it'll be a fantastic place for us. Thank mm -hmm. you.
I started the um, vintage tea rooms um, only because I had um, a craft stall upstairs and everybody kept coming in asking for teas, coffees. Well, the old people that were here, they'd finished um, and then so they sorted out that I could just have this little section down here and so I did it out all vintage. Um, it was green and red at one stage because it was an Italian place so I changed it. It was quite a shop to have it all pink and blues. In the past, it was really good, really vibrant, and there was lots of different people around selling different wares. Um, you could go from vintage clothes, and there was somebody upstairs as well that made um, items for your vintage items. Um, so from that point, you could come into the indoor market and there was just something for everybody. The reason I come to the indoor cafe is because it's a lovely place, it's a nice atmosphere, I love the music and everybody's friendly. Even when you're on your own, people talk to you, you go to other cafes, they don't. And it's, it's reasonable, very, very reasonable. And that's why I, I look forward to coming here and when it does close, I'll be sorry. I mean, it's called progress, isn't it? But it's not, you know, it's not, not to us, it's not. You know, I mean, I know we've got to go to the future, but not everything to the future, you know. It is a shame this is going, this cafe, because this is just... Yeah, just nice. nice we like the nice, music. We like the music, yeah. Like Have a little browse yeah. around when she has the things, little knick-knacks and... Yeah, when I first came up here, I came up here last year because I retired. I wanted something to do, you know, save twiddling my thumbs at home and watching TV. It's stuff that I've collected over the years. So I thought I'll give it a whirl because I've always wanted to do this type of stuff, you know. So I started last, last year, late last year, and I was up on the third floor and it was absolutely dead. Because you know, people went up there just for the wool and, and the sponge. So I moved down here with the other lads. And it was great, you know, because there was a clothier, clothier, uh, Andy's records, Mike, obviously, Sue. And we all had a good, good crack together, you know. You, know, you could really have some good laughs and that on the, on the old market. And like you say, you get, you get people up here. Not so much now, because like you say, it's a bit desolate now and you don't get many footfalls up here. So it's died a bit of a death. But I still, still come, still do your day's work. This place now where we work from the home place has been here since 1976, 78. Originally started by Mr. Worsdale. And then obviously he naturally retired and we took over. And it's the whole, generally the whole market around here has been a sustainable businesses for the majority of us. There have been some newcomers come and gone, but uh, the sustainable business like the wool shop, the net curtains, foam, they've been here from day one. And we'll still carry on trading. Things aren't like what they used to be, obviously with the competition that we have with the, the shops around and over the years, what's changed the market in general. 
but uh, absolutely no complaint. We would have liked this place to be where it is, remaining revamped, perhaps, you know, given chance to the youngsters in, at, at some point for them to be able to take on the footsteps of uh, some of us. But unfortunately, it's not meant to be, thanks to the mayors and their office. What else can we say? Personally, myself, I've always been an indoor market trader. We've supported the indoor market for, well, a number of years, 30, 33 years. Form Place has been here for the last 36 years. Not even once, maybe all day, we've stood outside in the open market because we've always tried to build this place somehow, promoting advertisements, banners, posters, you name it. You know, we've tried to market it. And over the years, we've got some very, very loyal customers who even up to today come up all the way to where we are. We are in the middle of nowhere, but we're still thriving and we'll still be in business no matter what happens with this building. I inherited the business off father in about 1972 when VAT came in, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, or 71 was it, uh, and I did, I did a good 30 years uh, outside and then, and then continued the last 10 to 15 years, well coming up 15 years in here, um, and I, I have felt more comfortable indoors, but um, it has been a, a really, a really hard life, I mean maybe, maybe, maybe lucrative at certain periods because it's inconsistent one, one year you can have a good year another year can be a bad year we tell the revenue and they don't believe us but it's true because of weather elements and whatever but um, like I say I, I was down here when I was eight years old helping father unload and put products out and, and I know I know the confectionery business inside out and I know what sells and what doesn't sell the pick and mix is a fantastic variation as you can see we've got nearly 140 lines and, and uh, the Leicester people basically have, have, have always have always uh, backed us up on it and kept kept us going. It's like the old Woolworths pick and mix, really. You know, and we, we used to compete against Woolworths price-wise, and uh, we used to win a lot of customers over. But when Woolworths left, we went through a couple of years where we, we you know, we benefited big time. Um, and of course, we spread down south. We went to Milton Keynes when that first opened. And that was that was a, a, a terrific market when it first opened because they, had, they hadn't seen a lot of our products, the old-fashioned fudges, which is what we sell, the old-fashioned toffee, which is what our lady was just asking for, uh, and we hit that with an hammer. Um, as you can see, uh, and it smashes up into little pieces, and it's uh, very, very popular. Wrecks your teeth, but they're not particularly bothered about that because they haven't got any anyway. <laughs> well, we're optimistic about what they're going to be doing here. Obviously, they're moving on to well, what they consider better things. I'm just hoping they don't send it into orbit with the rent. You know, if you know what I mean. It's uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a fear that you know that change is, is you know it can be good for. For, 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 for trading conditions, but you know if it's going to be economically unviable, then, then it makes it hard work for us to you know to compete and be in a, in a in a competitive market, and that's what worries me more than anything about the future. I think you know they're talking about conditions that are like Oxford Street conditions, and it's not really that that kind of market to, to keep the prices low. You need to be you know you need you need a cheap base to, to, to be able to present the products and, and, and get it over. <laughs> My name is Esther. Um, I work at Ida's Abadashara. I've been here for two years. Um, I think the reason people come to, to, my, to our stall is because um, we're friendly. We um, we got a good, we give good prices. Um, it's different from just like a you know John Lewis or just a normal shop. Um, we and we just we we don't just sell pe people things. We, we actually get, chat to people and advise them and. And that's what people like. It's not just like you're serving someone and you, you tell them how much it is and you, you tell them how to do it and what they need to do and like, give them ideas as well. When the, when the indoor market does get knocked down, we'll be having a new um, outdoor stall, a new unit on the outskirts of the market. So um, I think there's about three of us going into that. Well, I just hope it improves things because the, the past, since all this work's been going on, you know, a lot of people have suffered, a lot of people have left. Um, people that have been here years have, have had, to, had to go and just hope that we can make it through till when we get the new stall.
Yes, well, all I can say about the, the Leicester market, I mean, it's been here over, what, 700 years. Um, it's, it's, it's seen better times. You know, when, 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 I, when I started, uh, to tell you the truth, I was putting stuff on the floor. There's no stalls. The fish market was a real fish market. When we used to have the chickens hanging up, the rabbits hanging up, the water were coming down. It, it, was, it, it was absolutely fantastic. And then they built the stores out there, the roof. Um, I remember the times I, I used to queue up to get a, a stall from eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, and if I was a bit late, I used to get a stall with a leak. And I used to put a bucket to catch the, the rain. That's it, that is the truth. <laughs> right? I was making about, I could make about 200 pounds in a day. But as it stands nowadays, I'm looking to make a five pound a day. People say I look like Des O'Connor, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> With the cine stuff, projectors and cine cams, I mean, I'm, I'm the only one in, in Leicester left. You know, Jessup's and Young's and whatever, Steve James, they're all closed down. I'm on my own now, still, still selling this stuff. And I've got a lot of people, a lot of students, coming to me looking for this, looking for that, cine camera, a projector, because it's quality. They like to see the negative. So, like I say, I'm the only one left now to, 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 to keep the flag going sort of thing. <laughs> you have to have it in your blood. You have, to, you have to like this sort of stuff. You have to like it, you have to love it. Otherwise, we're just going to get brushed off with the digital stuff and going that the wrong way. And that's, I think, te te technology is going too far. It's making people useless. It's making people don't want to do things. They want press the button, boof, it's, it's all they're doing in, in front of them. Come on, let's wake up. Go back to the old system. <laughs> Since Indian Market was built sometime in the early 70s, Shopping habits were very different from today. The city centre was a place to go for all your needs. Over recent years, the footfall levels of people coming to the Indo market has fallen drastically, resulting in a decline in the number of traders actually having a business here. Shopping habits have changed drastically forever, with the advent of out of town complexes offering free car parking seven days a week. Online shopping, whereby the customer does not even have to leave his house. The market experience of shopping does hold some of its own trump cards in the battle for business. The outdoor market, with its vast array of fresh, inexpensive fruit and veg, is a great draw for the populace of Leicester. Ethnic groups mingle and rub shoulders with each other and enjoy the theatre of a live cosmopolitan market. And when the new food hall is completed, early spring 2014, I have nothing but optimism that Leicester retail market will flourish for another 750 years.